everyone, and welcome to season six of the Itsy Bitsy Zoom cast. We're back. This season is called Decisions, 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 from the day-to-day -to, -day to the courageous and bold, examining the infinite decisions made by and for the early childhood field. Our first episode is titled Helping People Make Life-Changing Decisions. And we decided to begin each episode with a quote this time. Today's comes from Oprah Winfrey. Nothing happens until you decide. Make a decision and watch your life move forward. Our first episode is very special as we have two of our amazing, creative, and dynamic Career Pathways colleagues joining us. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Marangeli La Santa or Margie, and I am the senior bilingual um, well, it's a long, long title. It's the Senior um, Community Outreach Counselor for Career Pathways. Um, and I've been in this role for a year. I am so excited to be here and happy to be part of the Career Pathways um, team. Fantastic, thank you, Margie. And Emmy? Hello. Good evening. I am so excited to be here as well. My name is Emmy Phelps, and I am the EEC Career Pathways Bilingual Success Coach. My job as a success coach is to, pro to provide academic and non-academic support to the students so that they can successfully complete their certificate program. I am thrilled to have Emmy and Margie here because our Career Pathways team started so tiny and it's been so successful that we've been able to grow our team and take on and have more colleagues and Emmy and Margie are just the most engaging, caring, wonderful people. So I'm really excited for them to be able to share more about their experience with students. Um, and in most episodes, we like to have one of our practicum students as a guest host. So Ashley DeRozier is here. She is our guest host tonight and it's extra special to have Ashley because she um, came to HCC and did the CDA program and now she's finishing her associate's degree. Um, so Ashley, can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Yes, hi, um, my name is Ashley DeRozier. Um, I'm excited to be part of this. Um, definitely a little nervous, but I'm excited. Um, so I went through the CDA program. Um, I had no clue what the CDA program was going to be about, um, but my lovely director actually was like, hey, I have this opportunity. Why don't you jump on board? I think it'd be great for you. Um, I looked into it um, and my, I worked with Abby and she was phenomenal with helping me um, get through this program. Um, and then also um, she was like, oh, you know, the opportunity that you can continue with your associates about this. Um, so I definitely went on to take that as well. Um, I am finishing up the semester, which I'm super excited about. Congratulations. Thank you. It's so exciting to see a student like Ashley who came to HCC to do the CDA program, which is a child development associate and also a certificate in child development from the college. Um, when I think about what I know about you, Ashley, and I've gotten to know you over the past couple of years, you're a parent you work full time, you already had some education under your belt, we were going through a pandemic. What in the world made you decide to say, you know what, yeah, I'm gonna do this. I know your director shared with you a little bit about it, but it does take a little bit of guts and bravery and self-motivation to say, I'm gonna take on a college program while I have all this other stuff on my plate. Can you share a little bit about what you, what you had to do internally and within your family structure to make that decision, and then maybe a little bit about how the supports helped you decide to continue on towards your associates. So um, I definitely, um, my husband's great. He totally helps me with everything. Um, but even just, I think that support to be like, yes, you can do this. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can do it. Like that's a lot between college and the kids and just everything. Um, but, you know, I just, I really internally have that drive where I'm like, I want to finish and I want to have a degree. Like I really, you know, I found this like education field that I really am passionate about. And I, I think that, you know, I, there's so much support out there um, between all the advisors that I've come through past. Um, all my professors have been phenomenal um, and really helped to, like that they're there for you, you know, that they realize that you are a person, they help you. Um, you know, and then just the encouragement of like, hey, you are almost done. I have a lot of the other colleges behind, like 
classes behind me that I really am so much closer to getting the associate's degree. And I think I was like weighing it. And I, I was like, you know what? I'm almost there. I might as well just keep going. And, you know, having the support from the different advisors and the different like professors was like, yeah, go for it. You know, you're almost there. And it, it's really helpful to have that support. You know, as a faculty member who's had you in class and many students who've had similar experiences to you, what's been really interesting is seeing how quickly our CDA students are able to relate the course content to their real work and make those small adjustments and changes in their classroom and come back with great evidence of what's working and what's not working and just build this sense of community. And I've really loved that about the Career Pathway students is that not only do they build community within their own cohorts, but they do with the faculty and staff um, mm -hmm. because we work so closely together. So I'm just thrilled that you're in your practicum right now. Um, I love coming out to observe your program. I'm going back to observe actually tomorrow. Um, and it's always great to see our students kind of look back and say, yeah, I did that. And I didn't just do it for me. Yes, I did it for me, but look at the change I'm making for children and families in this community. Mm -hmm. So Ashley, did, you had some questions for Margie and Emmy. Why don't you go ahead and ask your question? Uh, sure, for uh, Margie and Emmy, um, what do you think is the biggest motivator or incentive to apply for the Career Pathway Spanish CDA Plus program and all that it entails? Um, for me, as the community outreach counselor, um, I directly with the, our Spanish um, CDA student or prospective students, and I believe the biggest motivator comes within that individual person. I am there as a support. I will do whatever it takes for that um, student to enroll in class to help them with um, their application. Um, IT, the computer technology, but to me, one of the biggest motivator or incentive to be part of career pathways is just the, like you have mentioned, it's the team. We have an excellent team. We support each other out. Um, if I don't know an answer, Emmy might know it, Abby might know it, or Sheila might know it. So we work together as a team and that um, reflects on, on, on our work with our students. Um, you know, we guide them to, to, to every step of the way to um, apply to the college, especially for the Spanish CDA students, it's a little more difficult um, because they not only know the language, um, but they might have problems with um, the application since it's in English, we have to translate. Um, and for them coming to a country and not knowing, you know, where, where am I gonna start? And here I am and Emmy um, trying to support them and guiding them and supporting them in their decisions. Um, and for, and I know for a fact, we had our first cohort that graduated this past um, fall and all of them, they just have great things to say. And it's just that one-to-one -one support that we have provided them um, at any time because an email will come and we're like, okay, when can we meet? And I like to do the one-to-one -to -one communication so that I know that you know I can understand and that I can support you in any possible way so that you're able to finish and, and you know acquire that goal that is to finish the CDA. I love that. And I love that you're working so closely with our, our Spanish population and making sure that they have equitable access to coursework and paperwork. I know. <laughs> Emmy, you work with all of our students, our Spanish speaking students, our English speaking students, and you're, you're doing the success coach piece. Talk to us a little bit about what you find is a motivator or an incentive for our students. Well, I believe that as individual, we, individuals, we are naturally motivated to want to do better, to help others and to contribute to our community. And I have found that whether you're a Spanish CDA student or an English speaking um, student, student, our educators are motivated by, by exactly that. They have a passion for working with children and a desire to help their neighbors or their friends 
or their, even their own children with, with childcare and educating young children and to contribute and create in a stronger community. I, I see that and, and I also feel that and know, like Margie, Margie said, that the Spanish CDA offered um, uh, through the EEC Career Pathway Grant Program does that, does just that. It provides a unique opportunity for our Spanish speaking students to earn college level, a, a, a college level education. Yeah. And also um, it is special because it is offered to them in their native language, which is really crucial to preserving and supporting our Spanish speaking bilingual communities. And they also feel like they are being seen and supported in their experience through their whole, their whole journey at Holyoke Community College. I just have to share an observation as I'm listening to everyone talk, which is that the Career Pathway CDA Plus program and the um, Strong Start Professional Development Center have been um, working alongside each other and in partnership and collaboration for four years now. And we've reached that point that Sheila and I have been talking a lot about with students where I'm now encountering people who have gone through the CDA Plus program or graduated or about to graduate from um, HCC in the early childhood in the early childhood department, and I'm I'm encountering them in the classroom now, or they're they're now attending um, a PLC I might be facilitating, or they're working with one of the PDC's coaches, where that coach is reaching out to Margie to ask questions about some component of the CDA process, and. This is the first semester where I'm feeling this weaving um, together of our two grants in this really special way that can only happen with time. And it's just really exciting to, to see that happening. You know, and it's not just time, it's also that within our team, our, our, our fearless leader, Kim Quinlan, has built this culture of valuing relationships. And I hear Emmy and Margie and Ashley all talking about how it was the bravery to get going, but then the relationships that get you through. So I'm curious, Emmy and Margie, you both talked about individualizing your supports. Tell me about a time where you had to make really specific decisions for a particular student to get them through. What's that process like for you when you're individualizing your work? Either of you can start. Well, I will start. Um... Like I had mentioned, I've only been here for a year. Um, my past experience is in center-based um, childcare. And coming in here into um, HCC Career Pathways, um, my first in instinct was, oh my God, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna be able to support um, um, all of these students and individualize? Yeah. But each one of them is just like a, 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 a child that you have in a center. It's like you have to individualize to where they are, their needs, uh, and meet those need, meet them where they are. Right. If it's through that process of the application, um, to me, that first interaction with them via email, and I don't really like the email. I like to have a Zoom meeting so that we can interact, we can talk and say, hey, what is it that you're looking and individualize all you know each one of meeting the, you know that that student even in the evening I you know our job is flexible I love how you know we are so flexible with our students and I wouldn't have it any other way but just going through you know meeting with someone who is Spanish speaking that doesn't understand the process yeah. and and not only that process but filling out an application that is not in their native language. It was uh, difficult for that um, student. And I was able to sit there with her and I had told her, you have to create your account and I will through, you know, through Zoom, we can do, you know, fill out the application together. And it's just those little things that they take, you know, that they are so grateful because without that first step, they probably would have been in the program. If I would have just said, oh, I can't help you, um, then then what, you know? And this student is in her second semester 
um, in the right now in spring. And, and that's how I work with all of them. So each one of them come with a different need. And, and especially is that application process or technology. Yep. Uh, so we're working on that, trying to support them where they are. Um, and that's basically how I work with them, meeting them where they are. Um, even if it's a student that's been here before, or if it's a student that this is their first time in a college um, and this is all new or doesn't know how to use the computer. So we're there just for that support. And I'm glad that Emmy's here because then now she can help us um, with that process and supporting each of um, each and every one of our students. Because Emmy's supporting them with the logistics of the CDA application process as well, which is also very, very daunting. You know, it's, I think folks can forget that it's not just about showing up and taking courses. Navigating higher education is complex and having that support there is crucial. Emmy, do you want to share too? Yes. Um, well, I only have been in my position for four months now. <laughs> Uh, but I feel like I've been doing this forever because it is really so true that our team works together so well that it, it is almost like it's seamless for, for us to be able to provide the support that our students need, especially individually, because we do work with unique students. They are non-traditional students who have been either out of college for a long time and returning, or they are making a, a a change in their career or as adults, they're, they're starting college for the first time. So it is really important for us to really support them all the way through to, to assist them and, and inspire them to really want, well, I don't feel like they really need inspiration. If you come and say, I want to do this, you have all the inspiration that you need. Um, but it's really about letting them know that we're here to support them. Um, and in whatever they may need, whether it's academic or non-academic. And I, I feel that our program is truly designed to meet the individual needs of each unique educator. Um, and my, my personal intention is, is that to make the educator always feel supported, supported, encouraged, and validated so they can successfully complete the program and further their career. Again, whether it's by me, by Margie, or any other support through the college. One specific instant or situation that I had is where I had a student who had completed all of the CDA courses and was beginning the, the process of the CDA certification. Um, and navigating the CDA council website can be really, really, really challenging. Um, so I was trying to meet with her via Zoom and the, via Zoom, the, the technology wasn't working for her. And eventually I ended up meeting personally with her at the college because she was having such a trouble navigating the website that she couldn't even create an account. Like, yeah. And while I sat with her, I sat with her for an hour to try to create this account. And this was nothing that she was doing wrong. It was the oh, website. No, that, that website is um, not intuitive. <laughs> yeah, so just, just, the, just the showing up for her and supporting her and letting her un realize that this was nothing that she was doing wrong, that this was a technical problem that had nothing to do with anything was, was really relieving for that student. Yeah, it's being that person and being there for them. I'm listening to you both and I'm picturing you all with students. Number one, I can't believe it's only been four months for Emmy and a year for Margie because I feel like our team feels so cohesive. And when I think about, you know, when Ashley came on and we were informally chatting, Ashley was making those connections like, Liz, you come to my classroom and Emmy, I emailed you recently. It's coming together and it feels so great. And I'm watching Ashley nod her head as they tell <laughs> stories of how we support each other. Ashley, did you want to ask your next question for Margie and Emmy? Uh, sure. Um, can you both possibly uh, share a little bit about what keeps you going um, and so energized and dedicated? I'll start. Um, for me, it's knowing that I am truly making a difference in the lives of others. Education is really a pathway to transformation, and I get to facilitate and be a witness to that every day. 
And that's a pretty incredible way of, be, of, spe, of me spending my day. And I will have to agree with Amy. For me, what keeps me going is that, you know, I do love what I do. I, you know, when you love what you do, it's just effortless, you know, um, to see, to be able to witness students graduating, that to me get, gets me going and keeps me going. I'm like, okay, so the next group. Um, and I know that, you know, they, that if we are there for them, I know that with that extra support, they're going to accomplish anything that they set their mind to, just like you, Ashley, that you're just going for your associates. And, you know, that's what we want to see. That's what motivates me. Um, and it's, I love my old job, but this is very different. And, I, you know, when you love what you do, it's, it's like you're energized every day. I really can, cannot believe that my job title is a success coach. I mean, how many people get to say, hey, I'm a success coach. How cool is that, right? Totally. Yes. <laughs> and I get to, to be that for people and to witness the courage that it takes, as you said, for them to make that decision of, hey, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a change, make a difference in my life so that I can make a change and a difference in the life of others and work through that fear and begin taking classes at a college level. And it's free. You don't pay for your great. success coach. Yeah. You don't pay for your outreach counselor. No. You don't pay for Church. your advisor or yeah. your books or your course fees or any of it. We yeah. are just there for you and there for each other. Even on those days where maybe we feel a little like the skies are gray and today was heavy. Mm -hmm. We have this core group of people that all have the same goal and the same values and the same outlook for what we want to do for our students and our field. It's pretty incredible. And Sheila, and that is right. When you have a team that wants to work and help each other out, um, you know, it, it makes things a lot easier, not only for us, but for the student. Yeah, it's just amazing mm -hmm. how we can, you know, Liz is there, Amanda, Kim is great, awesome. But having Emmy and Abby, it just makes the team so I, um, so much better. Um, I feel that we, as a team, we're just going to conquer the world. <laughs> <laughs> and so for our students like Ashley, when you graduate, this team of people is still there for you. You know, we had a student who was on last semester who graduated and she still emails us all the time talking to us about her transfer school and her new job and how much she misses us, but she's okay because she knows who to ask questions of now. And, you know, this is a group of people that, you know, actually you're going to graduate and we're going to miss you, but then you're going to be our colleague and we're still going to be there for you. And so it's just this beautiful circle um, that's coming together. And I'm so grateful. I, I know we're already wrapping up this episode, but I'm just so thrilled that we started season six with this particular episode because it starts off on such a high note seeing Ashley where she is in her program and looking to the future having Emmy just come on board Margie sharing where she is a year into her experience here who knew that someday you would be an IT guru a higher <laughs> ed administration expert I mean early childhood plus not just right. CDA plus right on you right. know I want to talk about what's coming up in this amazing season about decisions. Um, our next episode is going to be the first of a two-part series, um, and we're calling it a love letter to family child care providers. We're really going to dedicate the next two episodes to the bravery, the dedication, and the passion that comes um, from the work of our family child care providers. Um, and there will be two episodes. The first will be in English and the second will be in Spanish. Yes. And that's the exciting part is for our second episode, Emmy and Margie are going to take over our Zoom cast and they are going to facilitate that episode. And we are so thrilled to share this, the process and the experience and the excitement with Emmy and Margie. And um, the another exciting part of this is in the next two episodes, one of our guests will be uh, Felicita Lopez, 
who was one of our first CDA Plus graduates. She's now um, a coach with the Western Professional Development Center. She has her own family child care business. Um, and uh, she's also an adjunct professor. Um, yes. So it's so exciting that we can um, work. This is another example of the way that we're sort of weaving something together uh, that is uh, just invigorating and um, inspiring. So I just thank you all for being here and for being brave and joining us um, on an episode. It was beautiful. And, uh, and thank you to our viewers for watching. And we hope that you'll join us for our next episode. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you for having Thank us. You.